All right, guys, uh, the next thing up here to be gone through is this rack. Um, now, fortunately or unfortunately, it has had a repair before. You can kind of see the inclusion line from the weld uh, undercutting. I guess it's probably done with a MIG welder, but I don't know for sure. And then on the face of some of these teeth, it's been welded up as well as the tops, uh, mostly in the middle and then on the back side. So what we're gonna do is take it over to the milling machine and mill a step along the back and the front to try to remove some of that old material. And then we'll clean up the faces with a grinder or with an end mill. And then we'll get it prepped out. Then we'll come in here and we'll build up each of the teeth, both on the back, top, and side, just like we did with the other gear with some of the A2 rod. It'll be a lot of buildup. And then we're gonna come in here with three ops. Uh, ideally, we would just have a cutter that's carbide. Uh, High-speed steel won't work here because this is gonna be hardened. And just cut this like Acme looking profile in one shot. Uh, but I don't have that cutter and I'm not gonna buy that cutter even if they make it, it'd be super expensive. So we're gonna come in here and do an operation where we do all the flats. And we're gonna just start over here on a known unworn surface and do the whole thing. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do all the right side and then all the left side uh, using a similar setup that we have on the horizontal boring mill when we made that paw gear. So let's get this over to the mill and uh, let's get started on it. I've got my ends marked. We're just gonna mill in here just to try to remove some of this old material. I got a carbide 5 8 end mill in here. Let's see, hopefully it doesn't get too upset at me. Put a little bit of tension on the table to kind of keep it from jerking. Let me up the RPM. There we go. A little less chatter. We're on an 800 RPM. All right, we're gonna get this guy preheated. Going for about 500 degrees. Hopefully this time my flame doesn't have too much carbon in, so I'm not adding any additional soot like I did last time. Take a measurement, see where we're at. 130, got a while to go. All right, we got it successfully preheated. Now it's time to get this guy welded out. All right guys, we got this welded out. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, really, this is like 90% of what it could be. We welded for about two hours straight and used about a pound of uh, TIG wire of the A2. You always want more when you're building up than you think you do. And in this case, I stopped like 30 minutes ago and then made myself do even more so that way we just have extra meat. And even doing that, I'm sure once we machine it, we're gonna wish that we had added even more but frankly, after welding for two hours, um, I think we're done. So the temperature of the piece is about 400 degrees. We're gonna let it cool down slowly overnight uh, inside some fire bricks, and then we'll come back in the morning and start machining this out. All right, we got this set up in the mill and we're gonna get ready to cut down the weld. I was gonna use a carbide end mill, uh, but instead I'm gonna use this indexable face mill. We'll just see how well it works. Um, we're gonna just touch off this surface and then uh, hit everything in one shot. Let's see how it works.
right, guys, this is going to be fun. So I have my weld build up over here on the right side. And before I do any single point cutting down the edge here, I'm going to come through with a quarter inch end mill and clean up some of this stuff down in the bottom just to make the single point cutting easier. This will be fun because I bought four brand new end mills uh, carbide as cheap as I could get them. And I'm kind of assuming I'm going to destroy all of them. I don't want to do that, but it just seems like these are probably not going to be rigid enough to do this. I'm going to take it real slow, but we'll just, we'll just do what we can do. I did a math calculation to figure out the distance between each one of these, and it's a really weird number. I'm going to use that to get me close, and then we'll kind of go from there. But yeah, let's uh, start cutting on these and see if we can avoid breaking any end mills. So far, so good on that. All right, just a little bit of an update. We finally broke an end mill. I'm very happy we've made it 12 spots. That's actually a lot better than I thought we're doing. We'll get this switched out. Maybe we can make it the rest of the next four with just one more end mill. Yeah, pretty happy with that. After much deliberation, I decided that instead of single point cutting this, I'm gonna actually mill uh, this side all the way down and then rotate over and mill the other side all the way down. Trying to make a single point cutter to fit this profile out of carbide, possible, yes. Uh, gonna be even more time and way too ridiculous, probably. Um, I realized if I use the quarter inch end mill, I can get all the way down to the bottom without touching the other side. And so I can clean up those and uh, that should give me right where I wanna be. So here we go. All right, we're over here at the K&T mill. We got the rack set up. I went ahead and finished machining each of these teeth over here. And we have our indexable end mill set up. We're just gonna come across the face and get a nice clean cut. Uh, we do have inserts every other. I don't have enough inserts to do every one. And this is the first time using this cutter. So we'll see how it works. We're gonna start with the slow feed rate, three quarters of an inch a minute. And we're doing a 815 RPM. We'll get this thing fired up and touch off and see how she does. Nice and smooth. There we go, we got touch off. All right, we're gonna do it 50,000, step the cut. Start with 17. Lock the table. Rolling at five inches a minute. Taking 50,000 step to cut.
All right, guys, let's have a chat here. We got this thing done and it turned out great. I'm very, very happy. Weld buildup, perfect, not many inclusions. Uh, a couple little like pinholes here and there, but really like as far as like lines or anything like that, turned out really great. It's nice and hard. It's actually harder than the base material by about five rock, we'll see. Finish turned out great. It's nice and straight, square, everything is good. Um, there was some wear in the teeth here, so I ended up having to build it up uh, on some of the teeth a little bit more. And then when I went and recut each of these, when I removed the buildup, I got it so that all these teeth are spaced evenly and there's no like thin spots. Uh, I left the two outer teeth untouched. They are a little bit thicker, um, but the rest of these teeth are all consistent in width and height and depth. And it will work perfectly for what we did. I'm also gonna be using some techniques over on the casting to compensate. We removed some material, it wasn't much, 20 thousands per side, but that does add up and I don't want it to be sloppy. So uh, when we put it together, I'm gonna to show you some tricks on how to get this nice and tight, even though it's now smaller, you know, even just slightly. So overall, very happy with how it turned out, but it sucked to do this. Um, I knew it was gonna be a challenge, but I was way wrong on how long it would take me. I probably have 30, 40 hours into this, a lot of learning, uh, machining the hardened steel was a huge pain in the butt, broke a bunch of end mills, um, went through like three face mills when I was doing the sides in the front, trying to find the right insert. You know, you don't want to invest like $500 in special inserts for something like this. Um, but you gotta be creative. So we did get it done. I'm happy with her, how it turned out. It took a lot longer than expected and I learned a lot. Um, in hindsight, probably would've just been better to buy a, a 4140 billet, buy a cutter, make a new one. Um, but hey, you know what? I proved to myself that I can take a part without the option of remaking it and to repair it and make it work. And we did that. So I'm happy about that. Let's get this back together. Um, we got this and the paw done, the two hardest parts. So hopefully be smooth sailing from here on out.